my name is Michelle Gay, and my YouTube channel is Michelle Gay Science Teacher. Today we're going to do a science experiment on acids and bases. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you glean some new information that you can share with your students or if you're a homeschool mom that you can share with your children. All right, so let's get ready. First thing we're going to talk about is what are acids and bases? I like to always give background information with my students and you can do this in any format that you would like to because if students do not have the background information and they're just doing the experiment, they're really not gaining the knowledge that they need or the concepts that they need in order to use later on in their schooling. These videos are meant for elementary students, so I'm not going to get too technical, but I do want to explain what acids and bases are. So, when we think of acids, we think of things that are sour. For instance, if you drink a sip of lemonade, lemonade gives a tangy taste. If you eat or bite a pickle, pickles have a sour taste. Why is that? Because they are made up of hydrogen ions. Ions are atoms and molecules that have a tiny electrical charge. These electrical charges, when you put a bunch of hydrogen ions together, it gives that acidic taste. And that's why it is an acid. Bases are made up of tiny hydroxide ions. And when you put several of the uh, hydroxide ions together, they make a base. And when you eat a base or taste something that's of a base, it has a bitter taste. Also, bases have a more slippery, soapy texture to it. And so we tend not to always just want to eat a base but we can use bases when we're cooking. For instance, if you use baking soda, it is a base. And so that's, that is used in things like cookies, cakes, and things that people love to bake. So now, how do you know if something's an acid or base besides tasting it? Because we're not gonna walk around, go around all the time tasting things, nor do we want our students or children going around tasting things. This is when we bring in the pH scale. The pH scale is used to determine acids and bases. It ranges from one to 14, one being the most acidic and 14 being the most basic or the least basic if you look at it on that end. And so you can use a pH scale to compare if a substance is an acid or base or how acidic it is, or how basic it is. How do you determine if a substance is an acid or a base? You can use the pH scale to determine if it's an acid or a base by using what we call litmus paper. You can get litmus paper off of Amazon or from a, a science company. Now, you take the litmus paper and you hold it or test it inside of the substance or making it to a liquid substance and test it out. And then you can compare your litmus paper to the pH scale to determine the number of if uh, on the pH scale and determine the strength of it if it's an acid or base. In today's experiment, we're going to test candies and compare them to see how acidic they are. We're going to use water. We have three cups. We have gummy bears, sweet tarts, lemon heads. We also have our litmus strips and our pH scale to do the comparison. You can use any types of candy you would like, but make sure you have one that is acidic that has uh, give that sour taste when uh, students or children will eat this. Now, in this experiment, students will be able to taste the candy before they conduct the experiment 
in order to write their hypothesis. So the first step that they would need to do is to taste the candy, talk in their groups and determine if that candy is sour on a scale of maybe one to five, meaning five the highest and one the lowest. Then have them test the next candy and do the same thing rated on a scale from one to five and then their last candy. Then in their group, they can come up with a hypothesis to determine which candy will be the most acidic based just on taste. Students have tasted the candy and rated it from one to five and then written their hypothesis to, as to which one is going to be the most acidic. Now let's start to begin the actual investigation. In each cup, you're going to put one piece of each type of candy. Now, you can also label your cups if you need to. Like I just put an L for lemon drop, uh, S for sweet tarts, and G for gummy bears. Now we're going to take our water and we need to cover the candy. Once you've covered the candy, we're going to let it sit for about 30 seconds. Okay, so 30 seconds, maybe a little bit more has passed. Let's take our first litmus strip and we're going to put it into the lemon drop and hold it about three seconds. Okay. And we're going to put this one here. Sorry. Now we're going to test the sweet tarts. Let's place this one here. And let's taste the gummy worm. place that here. Okay, so I'm going to let these dry for a minute and then we're going to come back and compare it to the pH scale. Okay, we're back. Now remember they're going to record on their data sheet the color of the litmus strip and the pH number. So now they can go ahead and record the color so it looks more like a yellow on the uh, lemon drop. On the sweet tart, it sort of has more of an orangey color, red color. And then we have sort of a red, a darker red uh, color here on the gummy worm. All right. So now let's do our comparison. Let's take our pH scale, hold on. Okay, so if we compare here, it's not that one. Mm, sort of. Compare there. Closer to this one. Yeah, it's darker than that one. So on the pH scale, this one would be a six. All right, so we're still acidic. All right, but it's a low acidic. Okay, let's go to the next one. The sweetheart, sorry. Let's see. Let's we'll start down here again. No. Slider. Okay, this one looks like a good match, but we're going to go up one more. Okay, so let's bring it back. So the sweet tart on the pH scale is a four. So that means the sweet tart is more acidic than the uh, lemon drop. Okay, and then our last one, we're gonna compare the gummy worm. Well, this one's not quite as dry as I would like. But let's see if we can do it. 
Okay, it's not a one. Hmm. Hold it there for a second. Let's look at it at the two. Okay, we're going to move up again. Well, it's darker than a four, though. There's some hints of red in here. Well, based on what we can tell, it's definitely, it's not a two, it's not a three, and it's not a four. So, we could say it's a 3.5 because this one is not showing. Um, it's darker than the other one we had. And so when we're comparing the two, but maybe sometimes let's sometimes we have to go back and look. So let's go back and look. Let's go back with the sweetheart. The sweetheart is definitely we go here. No. It's definitely a four. This one has some red in it. So I'm going to go between the two and the three. Now, if you come up with this and um, you're not sure, the student's not sure, have them retest. Okay, so during that test, you notice that um, the gummy worm uh, on the pH scale, there was a little, you know, sort of difficult to tell exactly where it was going to place. If your students and uh, you are unsure, just go back and retest uh, that particular candy. It's okay to do that because, you know, in science, things don't always turn out perfect like we would want or we wouldn't be doing science if that's the case. That's the purpose of learning. All right, so now once they have recorded all of their data, they're going to write their conclusion based on their hypothesis. You know, I like for my students to determine if their hypothesis was correct, why or why not? If it was incorrect, why or why not? And to explain that in writing. We're not asking for a thesis or anything, but we do want them to be able to have a good explanation. All right, so guys, that is going to be the end of this one. One thing I want to uh, encourage you is to, you know, conduct these science experiments with your students, um, even if it's online and you do a demonstration for them, or even if you take this video and uh, use it and pause it at certain points in order for them to conduct it. But this is an easy experiment, and as I said, I'm going to put in the Word document that I have. And so as an extension or the next lesson is to have them to compare the candy to lemon juice, vinegar, or soda to see which one is more acidic. Because then they'll get to see more results and to see that um, things can be more acidic uh, than others and not just, you know, candy, but other things that we use all the time. Um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about candy um, and how, at, how, how they become acidic and how candy companies do this, I would like to encourage you uh, to go look at an article in Scholastic Super Science called Extreme Candy. Um, I used this article with my students before I conducted this experiment. And it gives some great background information and just fun, interesting information that students or children would like to read. Remember, this video is meant for elementary, not middle school or high school. If you are a middle school or high school teacher and you can use this and continue to develop um, skills uh, on um, using the pH scale or uh, hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions, you are more than welcome to use this also.
Remember always to keep safety in mind, wear goggles, uh, do not eat or taste anything unless it's an experiment like this one. Also, do not smell things. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Michelle Gay. My YouTube channel is Michelle Gay Science Teacher. I hope you like this series of videos and I hope you subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you and have a wonderful blessed day.